to a new episode of Mostly Wrong Opinions. Finger guns. <laughs> I am Tyrone. That is Devin. But wait! Before you inject yourself with some decision fluid, <laughs> um, click that subscribe button. And I just, yeah, decision yeah, fluid. Yeah. A lot of crazy stuff. The reason why we say that is we're about to get into our review of Spotty. <laughs> On Netflix. Your presence in this facility, while technically a punishment, is a privilege. Where have you been? Drug study. It is directed by the same person who directed Top Gun Maverick. Crazy. Uh, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's based off of a, a story. Book. A book, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's about this guy who leads this prison and it's like this prison is like a, a it's not like a normal prison it's a research uh, facility prison and where they're, they're free to roam and everything and they, they got good food and they get to listen to music and they, they wear their just regular clothes but within this research they have to be like lab test dummies with they're lab rats yeah. lab rats <laughs> and they go through these trials that they get injected with this certain type of uh, of drug, well, many types that, of drugs. Yeah, yeah, many types of drugs that that induce certain feelings and and, and um, within a person. Yeah, and, and we were talking like, why was this movie called Spiderhead? Well, the research facility is called Spiderhead, but mm-hmm. other than that, I feel like they could have thought of a more clever name than than Spiderhead. Also, so this movie is interesting. This movie, Maverick. Is, yeah, <laughs> didn't like that title either. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that movie was. That movie was good, but yeah. uh, it's interesting that this is this movie was directed by the same guy who did Top Gun Maverick because I think that might tell you who was really in charge during that, and that might be Tom Cruise. I think Tom Cruise is in charge mm. for Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> Not that this movie's bad. I think the movie's fine. It's it's a it's a pretty uh, decent movie, and I can totally see how this be uh, a good book. But for mm, the yeah, movie, for the movie feels small. And I don't think they meant for the movie to feel small, especially now when they have some like serious names in this film, like Chris Hemsworth and what's his name? Miles Teller. Miles Teller, thank you. And it feels small because the whole movie takes place in this one building. And I felt confined in the film in the in the movie. Which I guess that's like the point, because they're prisoners. Yeah, prisoners. But you know, yeah. there's another movie that, and maybe this is an unfair, an unfair comparison, where the whole thing took place in one building. As a matter of fact, it took place in one room, and that's Saw. And it was I was halfway Ooh. through the movie of Saw before I realized we hadn't left the room. You know, I'm like, because well, yeah, you know? I was all I was all in the story, you know. Yeah. But this one, I was I felt I felt confined. I'm like, yeah, is there anything else? Are we, any more I, that I could see? And it's like, no, not really. But Chris Hemsworth, he's got like a very different um, character from Thor. And you know, I can see why they cast him as Thor, because this dude does not look normal, all right? he This is not a normal looking dude. Oh, and man. So, and so he stands out. And they, they called it out a little bit in the film, where they're like, oh, pretty people get whatever they want. But like, yo, this dude does not look like a regular dude. You know what I mean? But like the idea of like injecting people with like these like mind manipulating or more, more like emotion manipulating drugs. Yeah, emotion. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. And there's all these different drugs. And the, mo- the movie mostly takes place from Miles Teller's point of view. And so he doesn't really know what drug he's about to be injected with. Or mm-hmm. he doesn't even understand exactly what... Uh, they're even researching. So he'll just go into the room. They'll be like, do you want, do you choose to let them inject you? And he says, sure, acknowledge. And then Ooh. weird things happen, you know? Maybe he'll get pissed off and start fighting. Maybe he'll get horny and, you know, start screwing everybody in sight. You know, it's, it's, or maybe he'll <laughs> he'll be very uh, talkative. You know, it's, it's, it's unclear exactly for him anyway what's going on. But Chris Hemsworth, <laughs> he knows because he is the, the person that's delivering the drugs. Yeah, bro. I was, I was so I was laughing on the inside when the big dude for Unbot came in the room, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, "Yo, he about to, f- <laughs> he about yeah, to tear his little up. ass up." Right. Yeah, they kind of set it up to make it seem like he was about to have sex with this really big dude. He's like, "Guy, yeah. he's like, if you're into that kind of thing, you know." <laughs> but I'm not. He's, I'm like, not. he's like, "You're lost. <laughs> you're lost." <laughs> Let's get let's get back to um to Chris Hemsworth Hemsworth Hemsworth's character. 
he um, is very uh, outgoing and you know and, and talkative and expressive within this film. Yeah, he acts uh, like he's on cocaine the whole time. The whole time. The prisoners in this, which we only just kind of just go through. I say four or five prisoners. You know, that, yeah. And I was, was going to bring that up too. That even though we see prisoners and some of the other prisoners have lines, there's really only two people in this film. Everyone else is just made to play off of either Miles Teller or Chris Hemsworth. Even Journey Smollett, it's not really clear what she wants or what she's doing, right? Mm -hmm. She's more she's more like an accessory to Miles Teller, you know what I mean? So yeah. again, it's just nothing that makes it feel small. And maybe, and maybe that's what the issue is, where I can see all these people, but I really don't know any of them except for two of them. The acting in it was not bad at all. No, um, mm -hmm. yeah, we got uh, some serious talent here. Especially uh, Journey Smollett's um, part they tell her backstory of why they're in the prison hers is very very sad and miles teller's backstory is interesting because it's similar to that what actually happened to miles teller i'm sure you've noticed that miles teller has scars on his face and on his neck and these are real scars they're in every movie and that's because he was in a car crash and he really was ejected out of the out of the front windshield and did he not know that yeah landed on the side and I, I think he, I think he really hurt his, his, his one arm. He's got all these scars on his face, so I can see why he would be attracted to this story. Because I mean, it's very similar to his own story. He, he very lucky to be alive. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> okay. The backstory is: Miles Teller's character got drunk, hit a tree, uh, and killed uh, his friends in the car. And he got ejected out of the car while the car was on fire. And I was like, yo, if you get ejected from the car, you're dead. So I'm like, how is this possible? So I, I, went, yeah. and I, went, I went and looked into it. And apparently, you can survive sometimes. And, and Miles Teller's one of them. Because usually cars go out of their way to keep you in the car. Because getting ejected is a death sentence. But yeah. hey, Miles Teller actually did get ejected out of the car and survived it. So man, I'm wrong. And of course, there's just a big reveal at the end, man. Yeah, and of course, the big question in the film... Uh, which I won't spoil anything, but the question, big question of the film is, what are they experimenting at Spiderhead? What are they doing? What's the point? And again, like because we're from Miles Teller's point of view, he doesn't know, but as the film goes on, he learns more and more information. Now, I feel like the movie bends over backwards in a bizarre way to put Miles Teller in rooms that he shouldn't be in. I'm like, why would he be here? And why would, why would Chris Hemsworth, the person in charge, be telling Miles Teller that let's just go ahead and get to the review right now <laughs> okay uh, all right um <laughs> uh, good acting all around the board mm -hmm. especially i kind of i kind of feel that uh miss uh, smollett did a did a better job but yeah the film is small but it's 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 good enough to for me to give it a c plus yep i agree with you a c then give it a C. Yeah, even C, right in the middle, right down the center. This movie's fine. It's it, it, the big advantage is that it's on Netflix, and it, anybody can watch it. And you got some big stars in here, uh, but it does feel like the middle of the road, big budget Netflix film, right? Not, yeah, Netflix. Not necessarily, film. Yeah, not really a big budget film, but like a big budget Netflix film. Oh, uh, one thing that did irritate me. Uh, which I, I bet you we always disagree on this time every single time the the needle drop moments man I'm like I get it pop music exists oh <laughs> man so much pop music. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> which now, I Michael do like McDonald, that song boy. I like that song <laughs> but every three <laughs> seconds there'd be like a pop song playing and so I thought maybe the whole movie was secretly from like Journey Smollett's point of view because she's got headphones on about the whole thing mm -hmm. True. But that really didn't come into play in a new way. So I'm like, why do they give her headphones in every scene? But I'm like, whatever. I'm going to tell you, man, I like stuff like that. They, they speak it to a musician's heart. <laughs> yeah, but see, as a as someone who watched a lot of movies, I'm like, yep, I've heard that song. I feel like a good needle drops moment, like I said before, elevates the scene. I've always said yeah. Quentin Tarantino is the king of that. He's really good at and knowing exactly what song really like elevates the scene. But this one, eh, it's fine. I think this director got lucky that Top Gun came out. Top Gun Maverick came out first. First. <laughs> if this came out first, I'd be alarmed for Top Gun Maverick. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> not, that, not, that this is, not that this is bad, but I just, I saw nothing exceptional here. I saw nothing mm -hmm. interesting here. And again, yeah. we talked about during Top Gun Maverick, one of the main things that made Top Gun Maverick so 
interesting to look at is that they were actually in the planes. And that, mm-hmm. of course, was a Tom Cruise thing. So, you know, I think I think Tom yeah. Cruise was, was really the boss there. And yeah, the director was, the, was just yeah. was just uh, a working <laughs> He's man. just cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> he was just working, picking lenses and stuff. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Go get my coffee, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I gave this film a uh, C plus. Devin gave this film a C. That is our review for Spidey. <laughs> <laughs> If you can do us a favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there to your right. And uh, if you like this review, hit that thumbs up. It really does help out the channel. Or you can hit a thumbs down. Whatever it is, it is your opinion. But just remember one thing. It is mostly wrong. See you in another video.